can lead to real compromise and action in Congress? For more analysis on the President's State of the Union address and how it will be received on both sides of the aisle, I want to welcome my panel tonight, Brian Darling, columnist at Human Events and Director of Government Studies at the Heritage Foundation, and Richard Fowler, Democratic Strategist and Advocacy Director for Young Democrats of America. Welcome to you both. Thanks, Thanks for having me on. Uh, the President is promoting insourcing, giving tax breaks to companies that bring their jobs back home. This is actually something that passed Congress when Nancy Pelosi was Speaker of the House and got filibustered by Republicans in the Senate. Um, I, I, Brian, let me start with you. I, I don't get what's wrong with that. Well, here's what's wrong. First of all, this is going to be a campaign speech. Republicans are right. It's going to be the President's Occupy Congress speech where he wags his finger at those evil members of Congress, Republicans and Democrats, blames them for all of the problems that he's created Did, for America. Brian, to the extent that a President is trying to get his agenda forward, and if you want to call it a campaign speech, you know, right. that's fine, but hasn't every President done that? Yeah, but he had control yeah, of both chambers of Congress. He had a 60-vote no, majority in his first year. He did not have a, he in did his not first have, year. He, he did, did not have a filibuster-proof majority in his in this, first in year. He did. He and then and then Scott Brown was sworn in. He lost his filibuster-proof majority. Joe Lieberman majority. is not a Democrat. Oh please, <laughs> please. You know this. And Ben the Nelson. Is with I'm, the Democrats. You know, I think Ben Nelson has a, has a rabid weasel on his head. I mean, it's just it's. <laughs> so uh, it's, I guess you need but, hardcore leftists to occupy Congress. No, you to need get real Democrats. Uh, but. In, in any case, I, it, it, um, Richard, your, your thoughts on this? Well, if the Republicans had their way, Tom, it'd be pretty simple. There would be no State of the Union address because they they keep saying this argument the president's giving a campaign address, but the president just addressing the nation about the strength of the union. And I think what you're going to hear from the president tonight, he's going to say this, the union is strong, but we could be stronger, and we could be stronger if Republicans in Congress get to work and stop, you know, fussing at the president, really pass meaningful legislation. We haven't seen one piece of legislation from the Republican Congress that created one job. They they profess to be the party of jobs, but where are the jobs? Well, and in fact, this has been the least productive Congress <laughs> in the history of the United States. And it's because of and a Democrat-controlled Senate. The House has been oh, really? very productive. <laughs> they passed a budget. They passed a Ryan budget. And what did the, the Senate the, do? The, the private that turned Medicare into a voucher. Well, you may disagree with it, but you're saying they're not being productive. They're passing bills every week they're, that go to a silent death in the Senate. I mean, that, that, you, that, that could be true if you wanted to, but one of the most productive Congresses in American history was the Nancy Pelosi Congress, and you guys voted, the Republican people, the, the Tea Party voted them out, and they were more productive than the John Boehner Congress, who's done absolutely nothing. Well, they were productive doing bad things. They that's passed a true. stimulus plan that's that didn't true. create jobs. Know, we, you know, they passed an unconstitutional <laughs> Obamacare bill that <laughs> forces Americans to buy a product in the no. stream of commerce. Well, the president that also put two that also put two million young people back on their parents' health care insurance state, so they now have health care. It also got rid of pre-existing conditions. It's unconstitutional. Well, listen, and that's it's, the, it that's has the, not that has, has that's not still made, up for debate. The jury's still out on that one. Literally, it hasn't made health care better. Do you think Americans well, feel better about health care? Two million young people being on health care is a better thing, and people being able to get health access to health care without pre existing conditions, that's a better thing. Right. And so you create this brand and new entitlement. Bad things, Brian? No, he, he, what is bad is that <laughs> we have a third payer system that's ruining health care, whether it be insurance whether, and the tax treatment of health care and, and health insurance or government pay well, for Well, let's just go to a single payer system then. No, we need no government involvement in health care, and that's a problem. We're up to about 73% government money flooding so the health care system. So you want us to be entirely at the mercy of people like Stephen J. Hemsley, who makes a you know a couple hundred million dollars uh, a you know from from his uh, being the CEO of United Healthcare or his former no, I, the I, former boss who you know Bill McGuire took 1.7 billion dollars. Right. And, and what's the, the problem? The tax treatment of healthcare. What's the problem is that every is, single one of those 1.7 billion dollars was money that was taken away from some child who needed a surgery. Right. So let's get rid of the preferential treatment of health insurance so that we don't have so people get their money and they can pay for it on their own. Please identify one developed country in the world. That allows for profit health insurance companies to operate. Yeah, but capitalism one. works. Just one. And I we mean, the capitalism has been functioning for, for centuries. One developed country in the world that allows for profit health insurance companies to offer primary health and care health, health care insurance. Well, the United there States has a reasonably free market health care system Every and we're other going in the wrong made, direction. Has outlawed what, what? We don't want to be like uh, uh, Canada and England and, and Canadians. Uh, where are they going to go get their health care if we socialize our health care? They keep fleeing they Canada not, to come to the yeah, United that, that, States. You and I both know that that's a, that's a canard true. and it's phony. But it, it, Richard, tonight uh, the president is laying out a new vision for America. Much I think much like Kennedy. High tech manufacturing, our own clean energy, security not tied to unstable parts of the world. These are his words. Uh, your take on how that's going to play 
in Congress and with the American people. Well, I think how that's going to play with the American people is the American people are going to understand that this president is about making forward progress, moving the country forward. Um, and I think what we've seen from the president, we've seen him not take a very hard sense saying we're moving this economy forward. He's actually said, you know, the economy is growing, but it's not growing fast enough. But the truth of the matter is, is in the past 12 months, we've seen private sector job growth only under President Obama. We've seen more job growth in the past 12 months than we saw in 2005 under George W. Bush. On top of that, we've seen less regulation on small businesses and the middle class under President Obama than we've seen under George W. Bush. These are the facts. And the facts are that the economy was so abysmal. Because um, of George W. No, Bush's deregulation President of the Bush banking had industry. 5% unemployment. No, we were, we were the because mortgage industry we deregulated the banking and industry. People, these, these banks were incentivized to hand out under George mortgage, W. Bush. Mortgages to people that couldn't afford it. And then the, we bailed Predatory out under President Obama's happened. leadership when he was a senator. We bailed out Wall yes, Street. Because George With W. Bush, Bush and George Hank Bush. Paulson wanted it to happen. Right. And President and listen, Obama and supported all of the bailouts. He supported right, okay, the bailouts. I'll give, I'll give you the fact he supported the bailouts, but let's look at what the bailout money did for the auto industry in Michigan. It put it put people back to work. It put young people back to work. And on top of that, now the auto industry is making profits. So do you GM support the is bailout now, of Wall Street? GM is now making more cars. Is, is one of the top manufacturers of cars so in the world the because the American bailouts. government backed its companies. Do you support bailouts? Do you support the bailout of, support, of Wall Street? It's not a matter of supporting bailouts. It's a matter of supporting the middle class and working class Americans. That's crony capitalism. You, no, no. When you bail it's out Wall Street. When you bail out Wall Street, you bail out the rich and the wealthy, and you give them more money so they can do more damage to our country. Guys but are rich. when you bail out the auto industry, you bail out workers, middle class people. Unions. You bail middle, out middle class. Unions what's is what what's they wrong did. with unions? What's wrong with an equal day's pay for an equal day's work? Unions inflate what's wrong wages. With unions? When, and when, you, when you bail out oh, the unions, wages. oh my God, we can't have a middle why class did, in America. Why did we, oh, we can't have. Why did we have a? We have to have a dive industry. to the bottom like we've had ever since Ronald Reagan but came in. That's a great thing. Under, 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 they did not help the auto industry. The inflated wages were one of the reasons why the auto industry needed a bailout. That Nonsense. sounds like it was a it was a great depression caused by George W. Bush. It sounds like something that Mitt Romney would say when he was working at Bain. Capital when he fired the workers who were in the union so he could hire them at lower wages. We all know the fact. The facts are true. The facts Mitt are true. He created more jobs than was, was our that before, president. Well, how many did. jobs did he? How many jobs did he get rid of? Is the real question that we should ask ourselves. You but the facts. But the facts are true. Domino's but pizza. Let's talk about the facts, though. The facts are pretty simple. The fact is this: where there are labor unions, there are higher wages. There's a better standard of living. There's better community development. There's less fatalities on the job. The workers are safer. They have better lives for their children. Why would we not want that? in this country. Well, why are Americans not joining unions in the private sector? The unions are dominating the government Because the, the private sector doesn't jobs. want the unions. Because, because it's a $2 billion a year industry busting unions. Well, I mean, I, I, if you look at where unions have gone now, they're lobbying for higher taxes because they're dominating the government sector. No, the Almost unions 50, are advocating more than for 50 people paying their of fair the share. Work There's no reason that unions. Mitt Romney makes $45 million a year and he only pays 15% in taxes when his secretary... 13.9% in taxes when well, a secretary I, I don't pays 35% in taxes. That's just unfair. That's un-American, so like you guys would argue. Where taxes. is the justice and the liberty you, and the equity that you guys that you guys I, wave I, around? I will say it's not absolutely, his fault. yes, Brian. I would like people. I, I I agree with the Buffett rule, which the president is going to propose tonight, that people like Mitt Romney should pay at and least Barack the same Obama. tax rates and Barack Obama. They sure, should pay at least the. He's a one percenter the, too. Let's not absolutely. forget he's and a he's, one percenter. And he's putting himself in that category. Should pay at least the same taxes that their secretaries pay, that their janitors pay, that working people pay. And and, and with that, I gotta thank you both. Richard Bryant, <laughs> it's, it's been a great